Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So finally, we are going to do an upgrade that I really, really wanted to do. And I've gotten a lot of requests from people out there to do this too. Today, we are going to upgrade the TR50 Revolver from Umarex. And guys, in case you forgot, I'm going to go ahead and give Stumpy a look at this guy. This is by far one of my favorite looking pepperball guns that we've ever had. Guys, that thing just looks wicked. But you know, when you put it up head to head against the other 50 calibers, it fell a little short when it came to power. Not a lot. Granted, it would absolutely rupture every single time you fired out one of the pepper balls, and it would definitely puncture through that wood every time we fired the solids. But I always thought it could do a little bit better. I really did. So, what we're going to do is we're going to install one of these Power Pro 50s in our TR50. Now, what this is going to do is raise this from an average of 7.5 joules to over 20 joules, which means theoretically, guys, it should make this three times more powerful. Now, consequently, that will have the uh, side effect of making it not able to use pepper balls very well, and certainly not paintballs, but uh, because you'll rupture the pepper balls inside the cylinder with that much pressure. But it could be a pretty cool build. So here's what we're going to do. Now, for those of you who don't know, we actually do a podcast every single Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And, uh, you know, Paul and I kind of go all over the place. Well, tonight, I am going to be doing this conversion live on the podcast. So what you're going to see immediately following this intro is the conversion I did on this during the podcast. And then I'll come right back with you and we'll take a look and see what it is. Before we get there, though... I think we need a baseline. We need to know exactly what this thing is putting out. So let's move out into our hallway out here. Let's fire it down the range and let's see what we're getting right now as she sits. Be right back. All right, guys, just like last time, we've got the chronometer set up right here. So you should be able to see it in the uh, uh, display right there. I'm going to shoot from behind the camera. So it might take me a shot or two to hit that sweet spot. Down here, we're going to be aiming at, like I said, accuracy doesn't matter in this. All we're going for is I want to see what kind of velocity we're getting out of this right now in standard configuration. And for those who are wondering, we're shooting those same solid core, or excuse me, a steel core solid rubber balls that we were firing in the last one. So that should give us a nice hit on these. So let me reposition here. We'll turn on our meter. There we go. And like I said, guys, this might take me a, a shot or two to see if we can actually get a good chrono on it, but we're going to find out. So, just like last time, guys, we're going to go ahead and charge our weapon. All right, as you can see, it's charged there. And we are going to go ahead and take a shot right over the chrono. Here we go. All right, that was an error, so let's try moving a little bit. All right. 207. 188. 208. 206 and we're out so we're getting an average in that right in that 200 range so right around you know the 180 190 to 206 208 right in that range um and as you guys can see uh, you know what let me show you at that range no movie magic guys we were able to puncture, puncture through on this this is two pieces of wood again puncture through here and we were able to come out the backside and into the box back there. So, even at this velocity, it's fantastic for home defense. Now, let's do the mod. Here we go. Based on what I did last weekend, I had a customer that wanted me to modify this TR-50. And in case you guys forgot what that TR-50 is, oh. this, is, this is one bad girl here. That's one so bad what, girl. That's right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to modify this to give it some more power by removing the valve block. So I'm going to re-aim the camera down, and I'll be talking to you and all that stuff, but uh, Paul will take over the talking for a while you while we get it. You won't have to see the ugliness, and you just see the beauty of me. You won't have to see the ugliness. That is correct. See? There's a <laughs> bonus to everything. Oh, man. Listen to you. God, dogging me. Uh, yeah. Uh, going to make me cry. Going to make me cry, man. <laughs> So, All right. <laughs> if you guys are not aware, I'll make it aware. Um, you guys, I mean, most of the people that are here right now probably know, but the car accident that I've been in uh, in 2018. Uh, whoa, you 
Jeez, you found my new old stock Sound Blaster Live card. Oh, dude. Oh, he's going to want that. How much do you want for that? Um, anyway, the pain that I'm in is always there. People don't know whether the pain, you know. Um, but. Got to take out all these screws, guys. I know you're listening to Paul, but all those around the edges to do this mod. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> That's okay. And there, Lisa wants to know where your new mat is. Ooh. Oh, Lisa, you're right. And it's right there. Um, it's I can literally see it. I was going to unroll it and I spaced it out. I am so sorry. It will be on the next video. In fact, I will remove this one. It will be on all future videos because I love that mat. If you're in here and you're new, oh. he is modifying a, what is it again? This is a TR-50 from Umarex. It is a pepper ball gun. And it's designed to fire at uh, usually on average about 200 uh, feet per second. This mod should take it up to about 350 to 400. So, nice. Yeah, nice. which will make it com really good for home use and completely impractical for pepper balls. you got to shoot solids. You gotta... <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it'll just blow in the chamber, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. One thing I learned about this mod, too, is when you pull these screws out... Each one's a little different length, so I leave them where they are and pull the side off, you know, so I don't have to figure out where they go again. Good idea, yep. Or yeah. Or you should have a but, magnetic plate where you just lay them exactly how they came out. Yeah, I've got one of those, too. I'm just being lazy. Uh, address <laughs> sent, John. Just an update for you from Datalist. Or... Paul, check it out. Oh, got, here we we'll, go, guys. From this point, you kind of pry, pry around gently around your edge. Gently. Pretend Very. It's, pretend it's your girlfriend, not your wife. Your girlfriend. Yeah, there's there's stuff in here that will absolutely come flying apart if you're not careful. Oh, I can imagine. So, there's probably springs everywhere in that damn thing. You're, you're going to find out. Yes, you are. I'm gonna pry it real gently. The good thing is that this part comes off pretty easy. Okay, here we go. All right, there you and go. we're going so, to set it aside. So what we're changing is normally you'd have a valve in here that we'd have to change, but this is a higher joule version. All we're going to do is remove a valve block right here that gives it more air in the chamber between firing. So we have to remove this, and then we have to remove this little pin. So it's pretty simple from there. There but, you go. All right. Keep on going. All right. All right, guys. So I want to pause the video here for just a minute. Uh, there's something critically important that you need to know about this valve block and exactly which one of these uh, 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 TR50s or HDR50s you can actually upgrade using the Power Kit Power Pro 50. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you, and I'm going to see if I can show Stumpy this. If you bought your uh, TR50 in America, odds are what you got was the stock 7.5 joule version, which is what we were actually firing. And the easiest way to tell that is if you look at the side of the weapon, you're going to see a little F in there. And hopefully Stumpy is picking that up there, that little F. All right. If that's the case, you cannot use this particular upgrade. And let me show you why. So, this is the valve block that we took out of this weapon, okay? There's two things about this that I want to show you. So showing Stumpy here, the first thing is if you look down into the valve block, and I'm hoping you guys can actually see that. Let me get a little light in there for you. So you see how that's empty in there? It's hollow. Hang on one second here. There you go. See how that's empty all the way down? Now, normally on a valve block that comes on any other version that's actually upgradable, you will already have this small piece pre-installed in the valve block. And let me show you what I'm talking about. This one is off the 11 joule version. So if you take a look here, I'm going to get the light down there for you so you can see it. All right. So if you look down in that one, can you see that little valve right there at the bottom? And you'll notice in the other one, it didn't have that. It was just empty in there. That's the first difference. Now, the absolute dead-on way to tell which version you have is to open up this valve block on the back, okay? Now, you need to do this anyway to verify what version you have, but for this particular modification, you wouldn't normally do that.
So what we're going to do is we're going to use some regular old electrician's pliers, and we're going to open up this valve block. Now, this is the one that came pre-installed in this particular weapon. And I want to show you what the difference is. If you open up this valve block and you see anything except for an open area with like a little horseshoe, you've got a problem, and I'll show you. All right, do you see that valve? See how it looks like a little cone? If you remove that cone, okay, first off, this weapon can be upgraded, but to do it, you've got to have a special insert in here, and here's why. If you remove that cone to increase the pressure, your first shot out of this weapon is going to come out like a cannon. However, after you fire the first shot, it's going to go boom and drain your entire cartridge. This valve is that important. So if you've got this version, guys, you have got to change the entire valve block or get the insert for this to change that. And I will try to locate that here shortly. Now, let me show you what you should see if it's, uh, if it's actually upgradable. And these are interchangeable. I mean, you can actually put this in here. All right, so we're going to crack this one open. Now, this is the stock 11 joule version, all right? And we're going to open up the valve block here. And if you look down in there, do you see that little horseshoe? Okay, you can remove that to increase the, even over and above what we're doing right now to increase the amount of airflow. Um, I don't want to do that, and here's why. If you remove that, it will literally fire with too much velocity to fire pepper balls, and you'll be stuck to solids forever. And I really don't want to do that. But that's the dead-on way to tell if you've got the right version to use this power kit. All right? So assuming you do, moving on. So we have changed out that little valve. We inserted that valve down into there. You can see the valve down there. And we changed out the little valve in this. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, when you're taking out this little valve, and I want to show you as closely as I can on Stumpy here, it's a little flat tip screwdriver. Not even little, a big flat tip screwdriver. But they actually have some really gnarly thread lock on this stuff. The easiest way to do it is to heat this up. Um, I, I vice gripped it, and I heated it up with my uh, air gun. And then as soon as it was hot, grabbed onto it with some pliers, it came right out. And then I was actually able to install the new version of this, which was actually a little bit shorter than this version. That's what this is. So these are all the old parts in that bag. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to reassemble the gun now. And we'll make sure that we are using the proper valve block. And we'll screw this down. And if we decide we want more power out of this later, guys, we'll come back in here. It's not a real hassle. We'll come back in here, and we will uh, we'll remove that, uh, that little spacer there. So make sure this is nice and snug. You don't have to get crazy with it, guys, but it does have an O-ring in there. Um, also, you can oil some of this stuff as you're going just to make sure it stays nice and lubricated. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and reassemble this. Now, guys, this is the hardest part right here, okay? So... Valve block, and I'm, you know what, I'm going to try to do this in front of Stumpy, so hold on one second here. All right, so we've got our valve block, we've got our little washer that goes on, we've got our little nozzle that goes on, now this is the one that's got that valve in it, and push it on down, all right, take your spring and your locker and put them on here. Guys, this is the complicated part. This spring has got to be compressed to there while you're doing it you have to sit it into this block right here. If you look at this trigger mechanism, and I'm going to try to zoom in on this with Stumpy because this is a fascinating system down here. You have got that I have counted one, two, three, four, and there's a fifth spring holding this mechanism together. While you're inserting this, if you pop one of these off here, guys, that spring is going to go flying into the ether. You will never see where it is. So you've got two options. You can either take a picture of this mechanism, and that's what I would suggest you do before you even do any of this, so you can see how it all fits together, or put something over it when you're mounting this, because like I said, guys, one mistake, and you're going to be out springs, so be real careful. So we're going to go ahead and compress this. It's going to sit right here. That has to literally get in there while this is underneath that little block right there. So here we go. All right. 
right, guys. Hopefully you saw that. How careful I was to make sure I didn't let any of this stuff move. And I know that looked a little precarious. And, guys, it is a little nerve-wracking the first time you do it. Um, ideally, remove the stuff, put it back together. But it's just more steps. So, all right. Well, the dangerous part is over. So that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and now, this little chrome piece here sits in the barrel. You cannot put this in the wrong way. If you try to put it in the wrong way, see, it won't sit right. See? So it only goes in one direction and sits right there. From here, we're going to go ahead and take off this panel or put this panel back on. Now, remember, guys, if you were smart, we talked about this, leave the screws in as you're removing this and you won't lose them or wonder where they go. So this just presses back on in place. Here we go. And press it back into place. There we go. Once you've got that, secure your screws. And there's one. And there's no real order you got to do this in, guys. I, I still kind of crisscross. That's old old habits die hard. So there's two. Here's the third one. And there we go. And the fourth one. Fifth one. And sixth one. All right, once you've got all this together, you can test your trigger to make sure that your trigger is actually still functioning. As you can see, it's clicking right away like it should be. All the mechanisms are coming up, twisting, everything's pushing in there like it should. It's all looking good. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and reassemble the entire gun. Here we go. So take your base. This is simply pressed in here, guys, so just get it into position. Now, don't press this all the way in yet. This is very important because if you do, you won't be able to get your barrel assembly and you won't be able to get your uh, uh, your uh, uh, turn lock for or your cylinder lock. So you push it out so you can pop your cylinders out. You won't be able to get that back in. So the cylinder lock has a little button on this side, a little flat side here. The little button goes down through the hole just like that. All right. And then... This spring on the front of the cylinder lock has to go right into the front here, and it has to sit inside that little hole right there. All right? With this, you can just simply press this. The, there you go. Press the barrel in. Press this back. Now, at this point, make sure that everything is pressed in tightly. All right. Everything looks like it's in tight. And we're going to go ahead and replace the other side of the weapon. Here we go. And put all your screws in. I won't make you guys watch this. All right, guys. And just like that, we've got all our screws back in here. Everything is working. All right. Magazine release is good. Trigger is good. We are ready to go test this thing. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead. We're going to go back out on our regular range out here, guys. We're going to fire it down. You guys remember the numbers we had when we started this. So that's actually what we're comparing against. Let's see what we get. I'm actually kind of curious myself, considering we did not do the uh, removal of the valve block. That is one more thing we could do to even boost it a little more if we wanted to. But I don't think it's going to be necessary. Let's just see what we get. Be right back. All right, guys. So here we are back out on the range. So what we're going to do is I've got that same uh, two piece of uh, uh, particle board that we were shooting through before with a box behind it. Once again, we don't care about what it does to that box at this point. At this point, all I want to know is, do we have higher velocities than we had before? So let's go ahead and turn this back on. Let that calibrate up. And let's see what we're going to get, guys. I'm going to try, once again, you know, it takes me a second to get this thing uh, perfectly calibrated. So let's cross our fingers and we'll see what we get out of this right off the bat. All right. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and charge the weapon. Ooh, yeah. I don't think I had that screwed in tight enough, but it's still sealed. That's great. All right, so let's give this a shot. Cross your fingers, guys. See if we can get a good shot right off the bat. Whoa! Uh, Hold on, guys. I don't know what velocity that was, but it was crazy. We're just going to... Wow. Let me see if I can get this back a little further. That was nuts, dude. Did you hear it? And our meter, 
Let's make sure that we're actually on and calibrated. I don't want to miss this. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. Let me move it over here. I hope that's waiting for us to do it. Hang on a second. 354. 344. 345. 330. Guys, that is going 336. Guys, that is going all the way through the box and the foam and hitting the dummy behind it. Now, this is an effective weapon. Holy cow. All right, guys, look. Uh, I'm going to put one more mag through this. I'm going to see if anything changes or what kind of drop-off we get. Hang tight. All right, guys, we're set back up here. Uh, second mag, same CO2 cartridge. We have not changed it. All right, so let's see what we get out of this. So three, <laughs> pretty badass so far. Here we go. Uh, if I can get it in range here. 347. 334. 325. 331. 319. Okay. Guys, that is insanity. That is nuts, and I love it. Do this mod if you have this weapon. That's all I can say. Hang on a minute. Let me go back in here. I want to I wanna share a couple thoughts with you about this. Be right back. Guys, look, all I can say is the proof is in the pudding. Um, you saw the difference in velocity from before and after this mod. If you own this weapon, if you bought this in the United States, do this mod. It is 100% worth it, and it will still fire the pepper balls without rupturing them. Um, I was actually able to get another full magazine through this. Never dropped below 297 on the velocity, guys. Never. That's 18 rounds at over 300 feet per second. That is insanity. Um, and you saw what that first round came out at. It was, it was crazy. Um, that, just for verification, guys, it was going completely down the range through the box, through the foam, and hitting the plastic mannequin behind it. This is no joke. So, once again, if you own this, do this mod. Now, I will tell you, I'm, go I'm working with a supplier right now so that I'll be able to actually provide this mod for you guys. Um, until then, hang tight. The power kit, you want to make absolutely sure that if you buy a power kit that you've got the right version. And I showed you what to look for in that valve block, so keep an eye on that. Uh, but I'm going to be carrying the entire valve block, basically a drop-in upgrade for your weapon. So very soon here at the flea market, you're going to see that. Um, stay tuned and if you guys want one out there let me know if i've got them in stock i'll route them out to you we'll i'll let you know but it's not an expensive upgrade and it changes the entire dynamic of that weapon it really does um i've never seen anything quite like that that was impressive so well thank you guys so much for watching this is a good mod i have another one we're going to be doing on our little shotgun y'all remember that one the boom stick yeah um Stay tuned for that one. It's coming up really soon. But until then, all I can say, man, is this is Dirty Harry right here, and it is ready to go. It is really badass. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.